Welcome to the Audible. I'm John Kajemi, along with former Dolphin cornerback Sam Madison. Bo, Kim Bo Camper absent today, yeah. Sam. Rumor has it that he's uh, he's downtown at the courthouse yep. on jury duty. Yep. I thought when you're Kim Bo Camper, you can get out of stuff like that. <laughs> I, I know you're supposed to. That's why they got this guy the named, appropriate, named Stu. <laughs> the appropriate <laughs> channels to do that, right? Absolutely. I've been there a couple of times, and, um, you know, had to sit in there I mean, for the you, first 30, I, everybody's 40 minutes to an hour. You got to sit there for the right. first one, but to be stuck there all day. But, you know, he, he's a people's person. That's Maybe true. Maybe he want to be on. He want to be on there. That's true. It's you part know, of your wanna, civic yeah, duty. You want to do what to go right there. Everybody's the done it, right? And absolutely. And, and, and another thing that was pretty yeah. cool this weekend. Part uh, of your civic community w- is giving back. You know, everybody yep. has to give back. And, and the Dan Marino Walk yep. for Autism was hey, pretty cool. Yep. Uh, it, almost fifteen thousand people there. Mm-hmm. There were kids everywhere. Parents. Food trucks, uh, games, and the walk was successful. Kind of rainy and yep, windy, but, but it's okay. Great turnout. Don't stop. Yeah, great, great turnout. turnout. And um, you know, just having the players come out as well to be able to right. donate their time and sign autograph for everybody out there. And, and being the eighth annual, you know, is really special. You know, because you gain more people as it go along, and you know, it, it, that's what's great about you know this foundation and, and moving moving forward. There's always going to be a new person coming in, but they have a direction and some place that they can go to get the help that they really need to be able to live uh, a, a very successful life and, and deal with all the, the ins and outs as a family as well. So it, it's good to be able to see um, coming down here in, in 1997 and have an opportunity, you know, to be around him and understand about it and see just uh, the steps that's been made so far. It's, it's tremendous and it's only going to get better. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool because each family and each community wore the same color T-shirts yep. or the same type of T-shirts. And you had, uh, you know, the Miami-Dade uh, school board was represented the Broward County School Board. You had mayors from both mm-hmm. counties there. You had uh, the Dolphin CEO Tom Garfinkel. I thought that was pretty cool. He gave a, a nice talk because you know Hard Rock Stadium and the Dolphins yeah. uh, give of, of that facility on that day to Dan and his family and the and the autism uh, drive and the Dan Marino Foundation. And it was pretty cool because Tom brought a football out and after he was you know done giving his remarks to the people in attendance, he was going to throw it and Dan was standing right next. <laughs> to like, right. Tom said, what am I doing? Let, right. me, yeah, let, absolutely. Me give, let me give the quarterback, the Hall of Famer, a chance to throw it out there. Yeah, no, so and, it, and, it was pretty cool. And, and you talk about, you know, the different counties, Broward as well as Day. You know, a lot of these schools, they're dealing with a lot of these kids because parents still throughout the course of the day, they want to take their kids to school to allow them to have that access and that accessibility, you know, to other kids. So reaching out to those uh, elementary schools. I met a few of those, the high school, middle schools as well. You know, the teachers came out and gave their support, but yet and still being able uh, to have another person, you know, be, that, that bridge between the foundation as well as the parents, the in-between to really be able to help, you know, the kids along the way. So it was really good to see those schools get involved as well for his Broward County and Dade. Yeah, and like you said, the Miami Dolphins in full support of that with not only uh, administratively and and staff-wise and volunteers, uh, but the players coming out Mm -hmm. and supporting former and current players. Uh, As we as we looked at a couple other current players, Jarvis Landry and Rashad Jones getting it done in the Pro Bowl. The AFC ends up uh, coming back and winning twenty four to twenty three in a game that is still. It draws a lot of attention, yep. but it, it it's kind of tempered down in terms of the tackling and the rushing. But there was a, a big strip sack at the end there to win the game for the AFC. But it was kind of cool. Jarvis gets five catches, had a 78-yarder, had a big play mm-hmm. in the football game. And a lot of attention around Jarvis Landry these days because... <laughs> You know, the the clock is ticking uh, on the decision that needs to be made by the Miami Dolphins. And it's one of those things, Sam, if you look at his production, you got to say, gosh, he's probably been one of the best, if not the best player on the football team Mm -hmm. in his tenure as a Miami Dolphin. He's done things that no other NFL player has done through his first four years in in terms of wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, catching the football. Uh, It's just been incredible. I think that a deal hopefully will get done. I don't know, uh, you know, ultimately if that's the, where the brain trust is in the terms of his agent and the Miami Dolphins yeah. front office, but you hope it does because 
he's been productive, and you can't lose productive players on a team that are looking for guys to make a difference. Um, a lot of chatter going on, you know, throughout the last couple of weeks, um, and, and coming really from uh, Jarvis Landry camp. I mean, when you look at this situation, you know, the Dolphins still the cards are in their hand. You know, there there's still opportunity, you know, to pay him handsomely. But you know, Jarvis is looking for that long term uh, relationship with the Dolphins. Um, when you get drafted by a team, you know, you really uh, give it your all, you know, just to shine to show the fan base, uh, your teammates, as well as the organization that, you know, you're trying to do everything possible to make it a winning organization. That's what Jarvis has been able to do the last couple of years, but it still comes down to business, still comes down to numbers. Um, and hopefully uh, both sides can, you know, rectify this thing and get and, and have him in camp, you know, when, when it's time to strap up and, and really go full steams ahead because you look at the production in the middle of the football, Football field, You know, I've talked about it to nauseam about having that person in the middle of the field. That's Jarvis Landry. But having a big tight end to be able to help and offset, you're going to take that pounding off of a small frame guy, still be able to be durable, but yet and still be able to make more big, big plays and, and utilize everybody, especially, you know, with the emergence of uh, that running game behind Kenyon Drake. So being able to have everybody stills, um, you know, Parker, Carew, time to step in, you know, just a, a lot of different direction that they can go. And hopefully he's a part of this organization um, come in April. And, you know, Sam, that's one of the questions that are coming in off of Facebook. Zachary Gibbons asked, if the Dolphins do not keep a guy like Landry, do they have mm-hmm. enough? At wide receiver, I I don't think so yeah, right yeah. now. I mean, they have names. They have they have guys like Parker, and they have mm-hmm. guys out there like Stills. But after that, there's not a whole lot of experience, and there's not a whole lot of uh, I guess trust in terms of having them come back. If Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback, maybe that makes a little bit of a difference outside. But you have no tight end either right now, so <laughs> you don't have those numbers. I I think the Dolphins are lacking in numbers, and if they did lose a guy like Landry, they'd have to look at. You know, the free agency. They didn't have to look at the draft. Four guys potentially to come in. I saw two at, at the Senior Bowl that I really kept my mm-hmm. eye on. Uh, DJ Shark, I think it, it mm-hmm. is, from LSU. Big guy at 6'4", 200 pounds. And uh, Deshaun Hamilton from Penn State. Those were two names and two guys that I watched for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And in yesterday's game, or in Saturday's game, uh, that really caught my eye. But I don't think there's enough on the roster right now. You're going to have to stockpile <laughs> a little bit more talent. Um, John, when you talk about that and you look at the the draft and, you know, ultimately trying to bring guys in and be a a positive force right off the forefront, you you can't really depend on those guys. Look what happened, you know, to our linebacker, uh, uh, McMillan. Right. You know, we really wanted him to come in and step in and be the the, the middle of our defense and and the, the signal caller. But, you know, one play into his career, he goes down. So hopefully he comes back being 100%. But, you know, you, you look at the, the rest of the roster. You really have to go off what you have right now in your stable. Last year, you know, the strength of this football team, it definitely was a wide receiver core, you know, with, with the four-headed guys uh, that we thought that we could put out there and consistently go through the course of the season. But, you know, if Jarvis doesn't come back, then you're stuck with, you know, can Jakeem Grant can really – Yeah, can he play can a bigger can role? Can he pick a play a bigger role? We saw at the end – they did try to influence him and put him in situation. He made some big plays. That's right. And that's sometimes that's what you really need, the opportunity to show that you can make it, and then you get that confidence. But, you know, to lose the production of Jarvis Landry is going to be devastating to a football team just because of, you know, the direction that, you know, he's about is – I'm going to be a dominant force in the run game, pass game, and no matter what it is, I'm going to fight, you know, to help this team win. You're going to leave, lose that because he's the spark plug of your offense. Yet and still, I'm not even really going to say if he's the spark plug of the team. Right, and, and he's one of your best players over the last four years. There's no doubt about it in yeah. terms of numbers, in terms of energy. Well, everybody's already talked at nauseum about the things that you'd like to see change, mm-hmm. and that might be the you know after the whistle type of things. Yeah. But but I still like him playing to the edge. You know, Absolutely. you have to play right to the edge, and sometimes you're going to have players that that step over the edge. Yeah. You don't want that to deflect from your football team and hurt it in a negative fashion. But there are some other questions here, Sam, on Facebook. And you you have another comment on Jarvis? Yeah, I mean, look at Ndamukong Sue. You remember when he was in Detroit and before the new contract, guess what? He pushed it right to the edge and went over just a little bit. Listen, since he's been with the Dolphins, none of that. You give him the big contract, yeah, everybody's saying, yeah, it's a whole lot of money. But for the off of the field and the after the play, you didn't really see it. So 
hopefully it'll grow out of Jarvis. You know, the mature, the longer you're in the league, the longer you, the better and longer you're mature. And hopefully he'll understand the, the sacrifices that he had to make and tone it down a little bit. Uh, there's a couple other questions coming in via Facebook. Remember, Dolphins, you can do that. Uh, and, and we'll try to get them on the air. A, a couple questions around uh, Dan Marino and his mm. thoughts about Baker Mayfield. Any chance that we they, – they, people have heard on XM Radio yeah. that Dan kind of favors a, a, t- a guy like ba- Baker Mayfield. I didn't hear that. This is just a question. Yeah. And what maybe are the types of quarterbacks the Dolphins are looking for? Those are a couple questions coming in. He wins football games. Uh, and you look at his play at while he was at Oklahoma, um, you know, uh, just the dedication part of it. You know, this kid was was a walk-on uh, and, and fought his way through one of the, the dominant forces in college football and play on a large scale every single week. And he put this team on his shoulder over the last couple of years. So for him, it's all about confidence. And Dan was a confident player throughout the course of his uh, time at Pittsburgh. And then you know what he was when he came here, and he still has it, and, and he believes in it. And sometimes you're able to see those things in, in other players, not big in stature for as Baker Mayfield, but you know just being able to uh, make plays in the moment of a football game and have opportunity, you know, to change things, he can do that. And we've seen the, the shorter type uh, quarterback start to take over over the last uh, six or seven years. You know, maybe he may be the next one, and that's what Dan is seeing. So, you know, and, and if Dan said that, you know, he's seeing some characteristics that can help a football team win, and that's what a lot of analysts has been talking about over the last three or four months, and that's what Baker Mayfield has proved over the last couple of months as well. And, and needless to say, we don't know where he's going to go and, and and eventually where he's going to land. But, you know, the the for me, the trajectory is, is going up for this quarterback. Yeah, and I'm sure every quarterback needy franchise in the NFL uh, that was in Mobile, Alabama for yep. the Senior Bowl sat down and met with Baker Mayfield. I'm sure that they went through an exhaustive uh, mm-hmm. meeting to, to get every ounce of information they can and they will do that again right at the combine Multiple in, in, more time. in, yeah, in indianapolis more time. and at their pro day mm-hmm. and and then maybe a couple of private workouts so Correct. you're going to see those teams uh, like the jets and the broncos and potentially the dolphins that are looking for help at that position and whether it's the a, cleveland brown is definitely going to well, be in there yeah they're, they're at the top, <laughs> top of the list but uh, they may have their eyes on somebody else Absolutely. Uh, another guy that maybe shined yeah. during the senior bowl was josh allen a different yeah. type of quarterback maybe a more traditional type of size at 6'4", a guy that threw the ball very effectively during the game, 9 of 13, 158, had a touchdown, uh, has experience, has a big-time arm, has that command that you're looking for. Um, Big difference, though, in terms of Baker Mayfield when you take a look at his productivity and a Josh Allen because Baker Mayfield, although he was the catalyst for Oklahoma at the quarterback position, he was surrounded surrounded by a whole lot of cats yeah. that could play mm-hmm. at a high level, and that's why Oklahoma's had the success that they've had. Josh Allen, he kind of stood out among the rest, trying to raise the level of his football team against maybe lesser opponents on a week-to-week basis, but still came into the Senior Bowl, had some pretty good practices, and then translated that into some success on Saturday. Did you get a chance to to maybe look at him during the week or at the game? Um, just watching just different things you know just having captions here and there but you know just being able to watch these games over the last uh you know couple of weeks and in, in in the end, ending of the the bowl season you know i'm starting to gather you know from general managers and scouts across the league is like listen forget the the prototypical quarterback standing at six four and having the cannon type arm they're looking at guys that be able to extend plays because of just the different pass rushes. You're seeing a lot of three, four defense and a lot of different blitzes from the safeties in the playoffs over the last couple of weeks. So to make those uh, adjustments, having the proper offensive line as well as defensive line, it, it, it's something that, you know, these guys are starting to, to, to turn towards. So, you know, for as saying that this guy can fit – that system or, you know, it's out the window now. I think I these general managers, they're looking for a player that, 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 that has that production, you know, that, that can 
build chemistry around the other players because that's what it's going to boil down to. You look at Foles uh, up in, in Philadelphia right now, um, you know, the starting quarterback goes down, and guess what? The chemistry didn't didn't stop. Neither did the production. Neither did the production, yeah. and that's what they're trying to, to you know, base everything off of. Can we get the maximum amount of production out of a player if he had to go in there and be the, the day one starter. Yeah, there's a lot of times now you see in today's NFL where plays are breaking down because of the defensive pressure mm -hmm. and the different schemes, and quarterbacks have to kind of make plays on their own outside of what was called and outside of maybe uh, what you think might look kind of scattered yep. or made up. You have to make those plays with your athleticism and your legs on the outside, on the perimeter to extend plays and to keep your offense on the field for scoring opportunities. Yeah. So, um, you know, those are things, that's a reality. Yeah. So if you have a guy in my, like a Ryan Tannehill coming back that can do a little bit of both, both correct. I, I, yeah. I think that's the best of both worlds because you, a guy that takes off and drops his eyes isn't going to be successful Correct. at any level. Yep. But a guy that can that can move and throw on the run, move the pocket, and still be able to be uh, successful and complete a high percentage of throws and explosive plays from the pocket, those are the guys you have to try to hang on uh, to. And, and, John, you said something earlier. It was about being able to move around in the pocket and being able to deliver the ball. You look at the quarterbacks that's in the Super Bowl and how did they get there, you know, early in the game. You know, for his Tom Brady, yeah, there was a little uh, rattleness here and there because they were throwing some different things. And then they go and make those in-game adjustments. And, you know, you go and you look at the Philadelphia Eagles for those guys. They were just clicking on all cylinders from the first uh, kickoff. So uh, it, it comes down to, you know, putting the weapons around the quarterback as well. And, you know, for Ryan Tannehill, we, we've seen having Jarvis Landry as you know, that premier uh, slot receiver and being able to have access to him to the outlets and put him in different places, um, you know, is good. But having the mobility to move the pocket, when you see a specific pressure that's coming from a specific side or right up the middle, to be able to slide to the left or slide to the right and then deliver the ball and not being afraid to stand in that pocket is going to be huge and tremendous. But, you know, we, we've seen the two quarterbacks that's going to be in a dick, big dance on, on Sunday do that uh, in those championship games. And ultimately, you really want your quarterback to have the access to be able to do that as well and still have the capability and the players down the field like you said, surround him with those weapons, and that's why it's important, you know, to keep Jarvis Landry, build upon that, and add some different guys, you know, throughout the draft. But build what you have at, at home, and I think we've done a pretty good good job of that so far. Sam, some other questions coming in on Periscope and Facebook. This one I'll take uh, from Facebook. Michael Damper asks, why would – a wide receiver want to produce when he knows he's not going to get paid. Everybody's getting paid a lot of money, whether you're a first or second year guy or yeah. you get to that second contract. So a guy like Jarvis Landry, he's going to fall between 10 and 11 million and probably 14 and 14 and a half or maybe even 15 million. Mm -hmm. If a, a team, not the Miami Dolphins, but, or could be, but yep. maybe a team that has uh, an exorbitant amount of money that they're going to spend uh, this off season uh, just says, you know what, let's roll up our sleeves and, yep. and, and pay him, overpay him because he's been so productive. So guys are going to he, – he's going to get paid and he'll produce. Right. And, and that's the mentality of a professional. No matter where you're at in your contract, you, you still have to be able to consistently produce or you don't get to that next And that's a new payday. CBA, and that's right. just the way it is. We've seen it over the last uh, six years. Um, that's the way that it, it's been able to go in the past. You would say that a player would take that hometown discount. You don't even hear that anymore. Um, and I haven't heard it in the last 10 years just because of uh, the, the way that the numbers have failed for the players. So, you know, it, it's going to be a situation where you listen to what Jarvis has been talking about over the last couple of weeks and the direction and how the Miami Dolphins are trying to build this football team, you know, through uh, what they have and, and continue to do it through the draft. It, it's just going to be a situation where we're going to sit back and watch, but it, it's going to come down to both parties, you know, coming down to uh, negotiating and, and putting the right numbers on there and, and, and making sure that both uh, parties are happy because I'm pretty sure Jarvis Landry, he really loves the, uh, the aqua and orange and, and the management, they, they love the things that he does as well. I think, he, I think Jarvis feels comfortable. Uh, yep. about his head coach, about 
what they want to do offensively, about the people that are around him in, in the building, uh, the people in that locker room, and most importantly, uh, he comes to work every day yeah. uh, giving it team 100%. Yeah, Absolutely. he's definitely a team player. Uh, there's a, an interesting question uh, from Facebook. Chris Hasley wanted to ask you, Sam, uh, does the Miami Dolphins, do they make a move on <laughs> to leave uh, with the corner – uh, from Denver. It looks like the Miami Dolphins have some promising young corners yep. that have played very well, but do they need a, another veteran? Do they need some some presence on the outside? Um, and, and if, if you do, he's going to be in that role of becoming coming off the bench. And, and now, you know, for his age and, you know, all the different things that, that's come up with him, a few injuries here and there, but you, you look at it, Xavier Howard, he's going to be the number one corner on this football uh, team going forward. No matter who you bring on, he's going to warrant the number one wide receiver uh you look at uh cordray tankersley he got better um you you go back and you look in the previous years you know, the, these first year corners you know it takes a couple of games to get up under his belt same thing as Xavier howard last year started in there we saw some flashes here and there had his hands on some football was close to the ball all the time i used to talk about it all the time i like i love the way right. he comes out of his break this year you know he comes up and he makes those interceptions even turn them to the house you know um, but to have multiple games, having two game interceptions, you know, it, it's starting the switch start to switch start to turn on. And then you go and look at Tony Lippett, who had turned the switch last year, right. but eventually got injured and being able to talk to him throughout the course of the beginning and after the game, you know, he's itching to get back going out and, and trying to demand a number one corner. I think they're happy with what they have here, especially once they get an opportunity to see, uh, Tony Lippett come back and the production that he'll be able to do and the most improved player you look at um, our our slot corner uh, Bobby, Bobby McCain yeah, he played man great he, last he year. played extremely well and hopefully that'll be the, the the jump start for this team but the number one jump start was keeping the system the same to allow the players that's been in the system a while to start to flourish and that's what you saw on the back end yeah I think Sam. <clears throat> There was a significant jump. You mentioned McCain, you mentioned Tankersley to a certain extent, but Xavier Howard, those yep. guys, and you add a Tony Lippett to the group. Yep. Uh, I think that makes that entire unit on the outside in the slot corner uh, that much better. Yep. I, I think inside, uh, where, where the Miami Dolphins linebacking core, that needs to take that next step. That needs to follow what the cornerbacks did, their ascension from the year before to last year. Yep. You hope that the linebacking core as a whole, and there's going to be some new names on the roster roster coming into the Miami Dolphins and potentially working for through OTAs and through the draft and getting ready for training camp that are going to have a lot of competition at the linebacker spot because Sam that's one area of improvement on the defense that must happen and, and injuries always throw a monkey wrench in everything you know you don't really know how McMillan is going to come back you can see the production um, for what he's doing throughout mm -hmm. the course of his rehab, his treatment. You can talk to the trainers and all those different things. See him running in the bubble or out on the football field. But when it comes to full speed, one-on-one, -on -one, you have to cover a guy <laughs> like Jakeem Grant that's running up the scene. That's right. You know, having that explosive twitch and, and being able to stop and go on to drop him down is very, really, very important. So the Dolphins, believe me, they're going to bring more linebackers in here to – have that competition because you we've heard Coach Gates talk about it for the last couple of edition, uh, last couple of years. Competition is good, and also it forces the players to work a little bit harder. You know, never shy away from it. And I don't think any of these players will, but Coach Gates is going to put them in that situation and being able to add more to the puzzle with what we have. We saw some explosive plays from these guys, but still a lot more that Coach Gates is looking for because. Third down was big for us. The running game, once right. again, you know, um, showed it its ugly head throughout the course of the season. Got away with a couple of games here and there late. But, you know, later was good because it seemed like everybody was starting to click on the same pages and being able to play one-on-one -on -one was good. But now when it comes to your zone coverage, you got to be able to make the difference and be able to switch and go back. Yeah, I just think, take a look back and think back, you know, more consistent production, uh, less penalties and, and third down are yep. going to be things that during OTAs in the offseason and getting people that can be able to be counted upon yep. to improve those areas. Sam, it's Super Bowl week, Super Bowl 52 <laughs> up in Minnesota, uh, Philadelphia against the New England Patriots. It started out as a four and a half 
point uh, favorite are the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of a number that you felt like it might be a, just a touch higher, but a lot of respect coming in for the Eagles after what they did to Minnesota at home. Uh, Question coming in via Periscope from McLovin. Hey, Sam, I know you got that 10-table ring. What was Super Bowl like, uh, week like for you uh, as a member of the Giants? Um, for us, man, it, it was it was business as usual. That's um, Tom Coughlin. Um, you know, he, he'd been there before, Steve Spagnola. Um, you know, it was his first go around. But having an opportunity to have players that's been around and did it before, Michael Strahan is a defensive player, a Monty Toomer, an offensive player, went to the Super Bowl and they lost uh, to the Ravens in Tampa. Having that experience, being able to talk the players that and never had opportunity to go through them was huge. So having guys like Chris Long from the Philadelphia Eagles to be able to talk to uh, the players because last year he made it with the New England Patriots and seeing the Patriot way and having an opportunity to get there The time factor is huge. We had a lot of guys that were, you know, nursing some injuries here or there. So it was more important for them to be ready for Sunday versus being out in the spotlight and, you know, doing extracurricular activities. It it was none of that. Guys were doing, you know, the little things, but spending that time with your teammates and and cherishing the moment and enjoy the different festivities that they placed for (laughs) us. But you know, definitely being aware of your time and making sure that when, when the lights came on and during crunch time that you was ready to go. Sam, when you played in the Super Bowl and, and ended up being a champion during that week, do you remember, was there a one week or was it two weeks? Uh, yes, it definitely was two, two weeks. Did that help you as a player or did you, or did would you rather have played right away? Um, No, uh, because we had, like I said, you have some guys banged up and, and what it does – you know, these are two teams, nine times out of ten, you're a little bit unfamiliar with. You know, you look at the New England Patriots right now, they didn't play the NFC uh, NFC East, so they didn't have opportunity to see them very much on film. Um, they didn't have opportunity, you know, to play against them. You know, it may be a preseason game, but you're not really game planning for that. So for us, when we played the New England Patriots, we played them three weeks previous, right. which was week Up 17 in New England. Right? In New England right. And we also played them in, no, we played them at home okay. at, in, in New York. And then during the preseason, we played them uh, the third game of the season. So we had to put a real game plan and package together. Did we won that game and then we lost the week seventeen to help them go undefeated? But we knew them, we studied them because we had to do it the whole entire week and had another chance later on. But having that extra week, it gives you an opportunity to put the game plan in place. And then when you get to the Super Bowl, it's going to be a lot of things going on around you. So everything has to be quick, precise, because you don't have the allotted amount of time that you normally would have during a regular week because of the festivities that's going on. You know what? And I believe the festivities are still going to be going on this week and, and be successful. But for a player, and I'm putting my own self into this, if it's negative four and it's, uh, I, no I, I, know, I, it. I think I'm staying inside. No parts of it at if, all. If there's not a tunnel that's <laughs> taking me to point A to point B, then I'm staying in my room or I'm staying in the hotel. Yeah, definitely. Right? And that's going to be, um, for sure, one of the key factors. You know, for us, we were in Arizona, so the weather was phenomenal, you know, and, and it was beautiful the whole entire time. But you're going to be in minus four degrees. What where are you, you going? Yeah, where are you going to go? Yeah. The only thing that you're going to have opportunity to do is – be at one of the biggest malls in, in, in America, but you'll be inside. But majority of those guys, they'll be in the mall, have some little uh, autograph signing uh, uh, around the city. But I don't think it's going to be a whole lot really going on, and those guys will be able to focus a lot more. I know it's early in the week. Initially, though, who do you like? I like the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm, I'm going with the Eagles just because of uh, the the Look at rotation, Trey. Tra- the rotation stood, that they had. I didn't even know side. Trey was back from the Pro <laughs> Bowl. And then He's all of a sudden he just pop up Swoops right there, got stood his, up and got started his fly flapping. Eagle fly. Right. But you know, just having the rotation in the middle of the football field. I, I, we always talk about you know how did the uh, the Giants do it, and we always talked about getting him off the spot. But it's not one play; it's not two plays. You saw early on the Jacksonville Jaguars got 
got pressure and got him off the spot from the outside. No, that's not where it is. It's in the middle of the football field. And what we had, we had a guy, Justin Tuck, who was a defensive right. end. He get one-on-one with the uh, guard, and we were getting pressure up the middle around his feet. That's why he don't like people, Tom Brady. He don't like people around his feet. We saw uh, last week the pressure came. He slid. So the only thing with the, the, the Philadelphia Eagles, they do a lot of twisting. Right. And they do a lot of stunting. Tom Brady understands and know that, and he'll slide with it. And those offensive line, they play one on one. They don't do a lot of bumping, and he's just going to slide with them and keep his eyes downfield. Well, you, we got you on record early. You're going with Philly. This yeah. is going to be one of those Troy Stratford predictions no, no. where it might change during the week <laughs> no, not and then have change. amnesia not about a text or And anything. I'm pretty okay. sure everybody watching them, um, they're right, right along with me, and they, okay. and, and they don't want me to change. Because you know, so our, our, our buddy, little T, like to. Maybe change, yeah, yeah, the, change yeah. the facts. No, 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 no changes here. I'm, right. I'm definitely sticking with the, the Philadelphia Eagles. I love watching him uh, on Twitter, and he comes out so bold. And he'll be – we should know we should start calling him 50% because he's getting half of it right. Every he's, single time. He's, he's, he's upgraded, though. Yeah. He, he used to be like, 100% the other way. Right. So at least wrong. he's trending in the right direction. Definitely. That's going to do it uh, today. That's it. It's it, okay, man. We're, man it was, that was fat, fun having you, man. <laughs> this is great. Thanks for helping me out today. Kim Bo Camper will Trey, be what you got, back man? Fly, on fly. Wednesday. We don't know what time, <laughs> but we know who Trey has in the Super Bowl. So anybody that sees Trey walking the streets, he's an Eagle fan, a closet Eagles fan. Hey, Bo, we'll be back on Wednesday for yep. the Audible. Thanks for joining us today.